Okay, so this is the first field. It's our farthest west field, and it is peas and canola. Uh, peas are a little short. On average, they're only about five inches tall right now. But that is the reason we put canola with them, or one of the reasons. They don't actually have to stretch out that much on their own growing because once they grab onto the canola plant, they will stretch out that way and they'll climb up the canola plant. The canola seem to come all right. This I seeded about a pound of canola with the peas. So that's why it's not solid yellow like a canola field. It's supposed to be just enough to keep the peas up off the ground and out of the dirt. This field did have less rain throughout the growing season already. And I'm not sure if it even got the rain that we got two days ago, but uh, nothing really looks to be suffering too much. So hopefully in another couple weeks, it looks a whole bunch different. The peas are just starting to flower. So there's definitely a few more weeks of growing left in them. And uh, if they get another four or five inches taller, it'll be all right. Now this is our uh, <clears throat> our barley field out on our on our half section, and uh, it looks pretty good. So all these yellow leaves, that's uh, I'm assuming because of the dry conditions. I don't think out here got as much rain, so. That kind of, uh, kind of is a bit unfortunate. So the barley is well headed out. Unfortunately, it's not as tall either as I would like. And uh, height is really only, only applies to uh, like ease of harvesting. So if you gotta be right on the ground, you risk picking up dirt, you risk picking up rocks, you risk all that stuff. But uh, it should get a bit taller as it starts to, as, it, as it's heading out. So uh, some of the guys say it'll double in height. Now it is already, what is it? It's about 22, 22 inches tall, so. That's nothing to really cry about. We definitely aren't uh, aren't in that bad a shape. I, uh, I've been reading all sorts of articles about drought and stuff down south and a little bit east. We definitely aren't there yet. Oh, the ground is pretty soft here. They must have. We must have got the rain here yet. But uh, yeah, so the barley. The barley out here definitely isn't as good as the barley right at home, which is, you know, that's funny. It's like two miles. So how could it make such a difference? But it does. So. So this is our wheat. Uh, it's about 400 acres here. Uh, whatever's over here, 60 or 70. And then uh, I seeded this all in a couple days in the end of April. And it was definitely one of those times when you were, you know, sitting in the tractor and you're thinking like, this is ideal, this is perfect. The machine's running right. It's soil conditions are right. Fertilizer's right, seed rate right. Everything, everything was seemed to be, seemed to be working. So <clears throat> I had a pretty good feeling about it. And uh, yeah, it, it, it's definitely one of the nicer crops that we have this year. About three weeks ago, we had a little too much rain, come a little too hard, too quick. Uh, so down here, this is the lowest spot of the field. There was some, uh, that w it struggled a little bit. It was underwater for a, a day or two, but uh, this is Parada wheat. We grew it for the first time last year. It didn't work so well, but we thought, you know what? We'll try it again this year and, and give it a good shot. And it, it looks, I mean, it looks really nice. A week ago I was out in it and I thought, oh boy, we're in trouble because it wasn't, it wasn't even up to my knees and it was already headed out. Uh, but since then, and we got that little shower, now it's about 30 inches tall. It, it's, it's heading out. looks like it's feeling quite nice. I did, uh, I seeded this before I had all my monitors. So I had a plugged run here. And, uh, as you can see that, that's why you don't want to have that because in, in there, there's no competition from the grain. So the weeds grow and then it just looks dumb. So fortunately for me, it was just this little bit here and then I found it so it's not it's not all, all up in the field but yeah that's not good
But other than that, the wheat looks very, very good. As I said, it's probably one of the best, probably one of the best fields that we have so far this year. All right, so we're out in another pea and canola field uh, right here off the start. The start of the field is usually not a good place to gauge the condition of the crop. And that's because <clears throat> usually the grain trucks get parked right here, spring and fall, when you're either when you're seeding or when you're harvesting. So you're filling the drill right here, you're filling, you're, you're unloading right here. Uh, it's just it, a terrible spot for compaction. There's lots of people, they'll bring a disc or whatever, and they'll always work up around the approach areas. Try to try to get that beat up a little bit. This, uh, <clears throat> we only have three quarters of peas and canola this year, and they are all vastly different. So I'm not even sure why. It got a little extra rain maybe, uh, or, or whatever the case may be. The canola's better. The peas are, uh, you know, th these peas are, they're already flowering, which... I mean, the, all the peas in, in the peas are, should be flowering by now, I guess. And, uh, you know, they're pretty tall. So they're they're about 19, 20 inches tall. They're still going to climb up the canola, which is... Well, the canola will be... What's the canola? Canola's 30-some inches tall, and it's still got growing to do. So this is definitely our best quarter of peas and canola mix. The canola came nice, and the peas came nice. It's all starting to uh, to vine out really nice. It looks good. So hopefully that other field, the first one we were at, hopefully that catches up. It's not. Uh, it's about three or four days behind this one, so you wouldn't think it would look so different. But and so here's our second last stop. So this is the first field of canola that I seeded. Uh, the north end of this half is oats. Uh, this is our canola as well. And the canola on the other side of the road is ours. So I'm only going to stop in the middle one. We do have one quarter north of town. Uh, that's kind of the one of the better quarters we own as far as soil quality um, or soil type or whatever you want to say. So that's probably where the canola is the best. And I don't know if I'll get over there or not. I might. So another, you know, back to checking right where you drive into the field is usually not the best. So you can see this is kind of a kind of a disaster. And uh the reason it looks twice as bad as maybe the field we were just at is because it is. We use this approach for both fields, so it gets twice as much, twice as much uh, compaction, twice as much action. The stuff that grows here is usually a little later, a little lighter, a little whatever. This drill, uh, this field, sorry, when I seeded it, there was, uh, it was a little bit wet, and I didn't realize, because this is only the second year with our drill, that... Uh, the back shank will actually push enough dirt that it'll fill in the the row of the front shank. And that, uh, you can't really see it here, and I, I'm kind of glad for that because it's starting to fill in. But further down the field, it gets pretty, oh, this rich guy. What the heck's going on here? Never seen that one before. That's camping. I hate camping, by the way. I just hate it. I hate everything about it. Uh, I'd, I'd camp in that, though. At least I'd travel in it someday. I'm trying to find where this went for... All went for heck. And it's not looking like I can find it. You'll have to trust me. <clears throat> yeah, anyways. Somewhere out there, you should be able to see that the one, one row didn't grow as well as the one beside it. Oh, you're getting stuffy because the canola, you can really, <clears throat> you can really smell it now once it starts to make these flowers and it'll just paint you right, uh, it'll paint your legs right yellow walking through it. Not as tall as I'd like. I didn't bring my tape measure, but it's up to my, it's up to my hips. So it's 30 some inches tall. And, uh, last year we had a really good crop of canola. We only had one quarter of this Liberty. This is a Liberty canola and we had one quarter of Roundup ready. And that was our test last year before we actually committed to getting back into canola. The Liberty ran maybe 45 bushels an acre. The uh, Roundup Ready ran probably 14 bushels. And they were only a kitty corner to each other. So there shouldn't have been that big of a variance with weather and stuff like that. So we've pretty much decided we'll be Liberty growers. And uh, 
and yeah, looks like a pretty good crop this year again. All right, so this is going to be the uh, this is the last stop. So these are these are our oats. Now, unfortunately, I didn't do the math right. I should have continued to seed the canola out to right about there because all that other color that's wild oats and unfortunately in oats you cannot spray out the wild oats so this is going to be a bit of a a bit of a problem for sure uh there was nothing nothing really further that way so it won't be the end of the world it'll just be uh just look a little untidy and uh next year we will if we have time this fall, we'll most likely put down some treflan or something to uh, <clears throat> to fix this up. Maybe even seed it to uh, Liberty Canola next year because we've had really good luck mixing the uh, wild oat chemical in with the Liberty and uh, having really good results with that. So, because <clears throat> as you can imagine, I left this strip here just because I didn't want to didn't want to kill one crop or the other. But the wild oats would have just continued basically, well, probably out actually to where those deer are. And uh, there's no wild oats in the in the canola. So not the end of the world. It's not a real, not a real bad weed. It's just, uh, it's just untidy. And uh, you do end up with quite a bit of yield loss when it's in there. So... But it is what it is for now. The oats are a little short, but uh, they were also seeded. One of the later things that we seeded. So if they get some good moisture, they'll uh, they'll pop right up. And, uh, you know, kicking away at the dirt. Oh, you know, that's there's, there's lots of moisture there. So I expect in the next week, these will just shoot right up and uh, should should be okay. Not that I'm complaining, because it is raining, but I think after this fall, I'm just going to go apply to be a weatherman, because you clearly don't need to know anything to do that job. Totally amazing. Totally amazing. But yeah, no, we'll take it. Nice little, uh, nice little shower. We could use a... A tenth or a tenth or two every evening. <laughs>